Hello and good evening, Chicago. Welcome back for another episode of Shy Town Weekly. It's Wednesday night. You know that means we're in here. We are talking all things Chicago sports. We've got a big show lined up tonight. We're going to be talking a lot about everything. We're going to be starting off with the Bulls. They are out on the West Coast tearing it up. Might the Staples Center be the new home of the Bulls? I don't know. They had to change the name of it. We'll see. They are out in Portland tonight. That game is about to tip off. We will keep you up to date on that as we go along. Then we'll go and talk some baseball. Check on what's going on with the Cubs and the White Sox. Their prospective offseason moves. But will there even be a 2022 season to be had. We will talk about that. Then, Northwestern is hosting Penn State. The game is going to be played at Wrigley Field. We will talk about that. Plus, of course, Bears and Blackhawks talk on the way as well. All that and more coming up. This is Shy town Weekly. Buckle on up. Let's have some fun. Welcome on in, everyone. You have found your way to Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am your host, Adam Karnick. Thank you for stopping on by. Let's have some fun tonight. Got a lot lined up on the show for tonight. The Bulls and the Blackhawks have both just started playing, so we will keep you up to date on those games as they progress, keep you updated there. We're also going to be talking some baseball tonight, as well as football, both professionally and collegiately. But before we get any further, of course, we do need to acknowledge our sponsors for the week, starting with the Southern California Warriors semi-pro football team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get film, to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. Find them on Twitter at SoCal Warriors, Instagram at Southern California underscore Warriors, or Facebook Southern California Warriors. And Background Check International. Businesses, are you looking to background check a new hire on? Let Kit Fremen take care of that for you. Kit founded and has managed Background Check International since 1994, and he's here to help you with the screening process. Contact Kit and let him help make the hiring process that much easier. This business is used for professional background checks and not for the use of any crimes such as identity theft or any other illegal activity. Go to their website, bcint.com, or find them on Facebook, Background Check International BCI. And keep up with IE Sports Radio on all the social platforms at IE Sports Radio on Twitter and Instagram. Search IE Sports Radio on Facebook or go to our website, IESportsRadio.com. This show is also available to you on Twitter at IESRC or you can follow along with me at Adam underscore Karnick. And if you are listening tonight on Wednesday night, live on Spreaker, hop on into the chat. There's no charge. You create an account, hop on in. 
we interact and have some fun that way. Good evening, Taryn. Hello, Brandon. Good to see you guys in there. Brandon just got done gushing over his New England Patriots. He is very excited for their game tomorrow night. And Taryn, I think, is... Well, Taryn officially fired the first shot here. The Bears didn't lose last week. Oh, wait. So I don't feel bad in saying this. Taryn, as a Los Angeles guy, he and I are going to go back and forth a bit on a beef tonight, I think, because we are going to start things off with the Bulls tonight. The Bulls took over Los Angeles to start the week. Back-to-back nights in the Staples Center. Back-to-back wins for the Bulls. And not buzzer beater, exciting drama at the last second to come away with the win. No, they were decisive victories. You had, first up was the Los Angeles Clippers. That game. That game was on Sunday night, 100 to 90. The Bulls came away with that one. Uh, both DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine scored in double digits. The Bulls led. I want to get the stats up here. Sorry, the Bulls led by as many as 17 points against the Clippers. Ultimately, won that game by 10. Then turned around and played the Lakers on Monday night. 121 to 103 absolutely dominated the Lakers. Again, DeRozan and Levine both excellent nights. Anthony Davis got so upset in the game that he got himself ejected. No LeBron James for the Lakers. It may not have mattered. The Bulls led by as many as 20 Eight points in that game, ultimately winning by 18. The Bulls, as a team, shot 55% from the floor against the Lakers on Monday night. It was the first win against the Lakers in five years for the Bulls. The Bulls are on fire. 10 and 4 to start the season. Now they're up in Portland. That game just tipped off, is just getting started. Uh, Actually, they have not even tipped off yet. We'll keep you up to date on that. But I don't think there's any reason to say that the Bulls can't win this. I see Terran. I don't know why AD got ejected. From my understanding... Anthony Davis is unfortunately with the games being out in Los Angeles nine o'clock <laughs> on a Monday night. I have a three year old at home. It's amazing how once you you get kids, your ability to stay up late just stops happening. So, admittedly, I was not able to stay up and watch the entirety of either of those games. I I got to see some of the Golden State game on uh, either Friday or Saturday night last week. But these West Coast trips are always tough to stay up and watch the games, unfortunately. My understanding of why Anthony Davis got tossed, he had already had an earlier incident with one of the officials earlier in the game and then uh, he had a situation where his shoe came off and he stopped playing to to get his shoe back on the refs allowed the game to continue to be played and Davis took exception to that the refs decided we're not going to let you get away with this teed him up. It was his second technical, so that resulted in an automatic ejection at that point. And yes, yes, that is the first win against the Lakers in five years. The Bulls have been, Taryn is asking, were the Bulls just that inconsistent in the past? 
since letting Tom Thibodeau go and the end of the Derrick Rose era and the end of Joakim Noam and, and Thibodeau and the, some of the other stars from that era, the Bulls have been awful, to put it nicely. Um, you had, and unfortunately it stemmed from the top. You had Gar, Gar Foreman and John Paxson running the, the team and really not knowing what they were doing to be nice as president and general managers, really not having a clear vision or understanding of what they needed to be doing. And then they hired men to be head coaches that were in over their heads. You had Fred Hoiberg, who was a good college head coach, but he struggled to get consistency in the professional game. And then they replaced him with Jim Boylan, who, oh my God. Jim Boylan is a fine assistant coach. As a head coach, he had no clue. He had absolutely no idea what he was doing he immediately lost the respect of the players. And they just, they held on to him too long. So, we're seeing now with Arturis Kershenovitz, AK, and Mark Eversley, the new president and new general manager, and now with Coach Collins taking over, we're just seeing competency from leadership in the organization. You're, you're seeing people in positions that should be in the positions they're in. And it's resulting in good basketball. And Karshinovitz and Eversley have done a terrific job of building this roster and Donovan is doing a fantastic job of understanding what roles what players on his roster fit what role and getting the most out of them. Alex Caruso is a perfect example. Caruso actually got a a tribute video against the Lakers on Monday night where they were showing highlights from his time with the Lakers all the way to uh, I was I was listening just before doing the show they included clips from some of his high school days because he's from the Los Angeles area originally Caruso's not a guy I, there's a reason the Lakers let him go and Taryn, I know you, you wish the Lakers would have kept him. And Caruso talked about this recently where he hit free agency. He would have liked to have stayed with the Lakers. The Lakers lowballed him. They lowballed him big time. And he got the offer from the Bulls, went back to the Lakers and said, hey, here's what the Bulls are offering. Are you willing to match it? No. Okay, I'm willing to take a little less. Are you going to be able to come anywhere close to this deal? They said no. He said, all right, well, I'll go to Chicago. Caruso's a guy that if you're relying on him to be a star on the team, you're in trouble. He's... His overall skill is not going to allow him to carry a team through a game or a week or a month or a season. Eventually, his his overall lack of talent is going to catch up with him. But what he's great at and what Billy Donovan 
gets out of him night after night is coming off the bench when you need that that espresso shot, that zap of energy, that spark, that energizer bunny, whatever fill in the sports jargony word that we use when you need that guy that comes off the bench to rejuvenate the team Caruso's the guy his defense just his his effort and his energy on defense is enough to frustrate whomever he's assigned to guard while he's while he's out there on the court he routinely, night after night, gets multiple steals and takeaways. And he's contributing offensively as well. He, he didn't score against the Lakers, but he's been putting up 6, 8, 10 points per night. And then you've got DeMar DeRozan, who just came in as well. What was largely considered by a lot of people one of the worst signings in the offseason by the Bulls. And DeRozan's going out there and putting up 38 points, 30 points, 36, and just scoring seemingly at will out there without making it be all about him. He's still operating within the team structure. I just want to give all the credit in the world to AK and Eversley and Donovan for creating and establishing the the culture and the environment for this season. It is working. The players have bought in and they're having tremendous success to start the season. Usually when the Bulls go off on a West Coast trip, and it used to be it's kind of funny when this started. I was thinking, oh, this was, uh, this is like an old fashioned circus trip. Uh, for those that don't know or don't remember, it used to be around this time every year there was a circus that came into town. It was the Barnum and Bailey Circus would come in to Chicago for two weeks and take over United Center. So both the Bulls and the Blackhawks had to leave. For those two weeks and that was frequently when they'd wind up going on a west coast trip because then you can hit all those those cities all at once and it makes it easier for scheduling this was almost like an old circus trip for the bulls and the bulls would struggle out on the west coast for a long stretch and a long extended period of time so when they were getting ready to go on this trip, you were thinking, ah, well, now we're going to get to learn a lot about these Bulls. This is five games out on the West Coast. Are they going to win three of them, two of them, one of them, none of them? What are they What are they going to do? And so far, they've taken two in a row, two of the first three. Yeah, I've lost to the Warriors, but you're, you took on the Clippers. You took on the Lakers, both back-to-back nights and won. And now... They're, it's very, very early, but they're leading in Portland. Uh, let's see. Is Dame Lillard playing tonight? He is. He was in the starting lineup. He is 0 for 2 from the field to start. Does have a rebound and an assist. Midway through the first quarter, it's 15 to 6 Bulls, so still very, very early in that one. But... The Bulls are exceeding expectations, to say the least. After tonight, they've got one more game on this five-game West Coast trip. They play the Nuggets on, what would that be, Friday night. They play the Nuggets. Then they get to come home for a couple, take on the Knicks and the the Pacers back-to-back nights on Sunday and Monday. It's entirely possible they come back from this West Coast trip with 12 wins. Even just coming back with 11 wins would be impressive as a whole. But 
this team is fun. They're they're getting scoring from everybody and everywhere. They're going to be – they're looking like a playoff team. It's still very early. I mean, we're not even 20% of the way through the season, so there's a lot that could happen yet. But the Bulls are alive and well. Things are looking good on the west side in United Center. All right, we are going to take our first break, and then when we come back – from being early on in the season with the Bulls, we are going to talk some off-season moves, potentially, for the two baseball teams in town. This is Shy town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, back in just a few minutes. <laughs> What's up, sports fans? Are you looking for the latest on Northern California sports? Then take a trip out west with me, your host, Gina G, on Reppin' the NorCal Sports, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'll be bringing it to you all the way live every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And it's always a packed show. I'll bring you everything. Dynastic 49ers. The bite of the San Jose Sharks. Torture of the San Francisco Giants. The Golden State Warriors that we still believe. Then take you across the bay to the rise and grind of the Oakland A's. I've got you covered on college ball from the Cal Bears to the Stanford Cardinal, so that no matter what, reppin' the NorCal sports is always reppin' the Bay. So if you bleed red and gold, or you're looking to keep an eye out west in them thar hills, don't miss me, Gina G, on reppin' the NorCal sports. Catch me every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'll have your fandom repped harder than a trio of Defenders Garden Stephen Curry before his buzzer beater is Gucci. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, the entire lot. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at FastBreakISR. D-Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And give you guys spending time on a Sunday. Tune in.
Hey, USRN fans, do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. Football fans, this is me, Bar Larrabee, inviting you to join myself, Colin Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head-to-head primetime face-offs each week. You don't want to miss it. Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. And welcome back into Shy Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio. Been talking a lot of Bulls to start off the show. One final thought on the Bulls before we move on. Not only have the Bulls been off to this great start, this West Coast trip, they've been doing it not at full strength. Patrick Williams, the young second-year player, he is out for probably the entire rest of the season with an ankle injury. He might be able to come back late March, early April, maybe, maybe in time for a playoff run. And then literally as they were getting ready to go on this West Coast trip, they found out that they were going to be without Vucevic because he had to go into the COVID protocols. So they're two big men there without on this West Coast trip, and they've still taken two out of three. Speaking of West Coast trip, I see Gina in there in the chat room. Good evening, Gina. Yet yeah, her her Golden State Warriors are the one loss for the Bulls on the uh, on this trip. Hopefully, it'll be the only one from there. So now let's let's move out of basketball. Now let's move on to baseball. So the Cy Young Awards were announced earlier to today. And not surprisingly, Robbie Ray from the Blue Jays won it. He took 29 of the 30 first place votes. But there were a lot of White Sox pitchers that are on the list. Lance Lynn did the best. He got 48 Points He got 11 third place votes. And Carlos Rodon 
was fifth on the list. He had four third place votes. Liam Hendricks is on the list. He got three third place votes. He got 10 points overall. And then Lucas Giolito got a vote, got, got one fifth place vote in there. So a lot of love from the voters for the White Sox pitching staff as we're entering the off season. But pitching for the White Sox, that is clearly going to be their big need entering this off season is they have got to get more out of their starting rotation. Uh, we outlined it during when they got eliminated from Houston in the playoffs. I'm gonna I've got the numbers right here. So their their numbers from their tar, for, yeah. numbers from their starting staff. There we go. Let's try English, shall we? Twelve and a third total innings pitched in the four games. 14 hits, 14 runs allowed, 12 walks, just 13 strikeouts, and an earned run average of 10.22 as a staff. Yuck. Obviously, that's not going to get it done. They're a little handcuffed in some regards. Dallas Keuchel is almost certainly going to be back. They can't, I don't know that they could move that contract if they wanted to. Lance Lynn, he signed an extension during the season, so he will be back, which is which is great for the Sox. He's such a good top end of the rotation guy. Giolito will be back. Rodon almost certainly will not be back. But they are planning on moving Kopek into that rotation, out of the bullpen and into the rotation. But still... They're probably going to need another guy. Dylan Cease has not been consistent. Dallas Keuchel has been bad. Uh, that was a that was a move that you felt like was very similar to the Cubs when they got John Lester. That the when you got to the end of that deal it wasn't going to look very good but you were hoping that the first couple of years were great Keuchel's deal has gotten bad very quickly unfortunately the White Sox were very interested in getting Justin Verlander one time of the Detroit Tigers most recently of the Houston Astros but the Astros resigned him earlier today so Verlander is is off the table for the White Sox. So now they've got to look elsewhere. The Cubs, I heard an interview that Jed Hoyer, Cubs general manager, gave earlier today on the radio that the Cubs want, they have money to spend. They are planning on being aggressive in free agency this year to try and plug some holes and be competitive again. Of course, they completely dismantled their championship roster, trying to rebuild, trying to do, well, maybe not a complete tear down, certainly a retooling, you know, getting rid of Chris Bryant, getting rid of Anthony Rizzo, Javier Baez, etc. ad nauseum. Hoyer also mentioned he specifically referenced the Atlanta Braves saying, well, look at look at what the Braves did. They they were some of the lowest odds to win the World Series entering the playoffs, and yet they won the World Series. So he's trying to use that as inspiration and motivation that, hey, he you don't have to necessarily be the best team in the regular season. Just get into the playoffs. He ref- he consistently referred to it as the tournament. Get into the tournament, and then let's see what happens. I'm wondering 
if there's even going to be a season, though. One of the things that was kind of hanging over this entire MLB season is that coming up here in just a few weeks in December, Major League Baseball's uh, collective bargaining agreement with its players' union is set to expire. And whichever side you want to fall on, on the side of the teams or the side of the players, it's sounding more and more as though there's going to be some kind of work stoppage. And if the 2020 season was any indication where clearly both sides wanted to get out there and play games during the pandemic, yet they couldn't figure out how to make it happen. And they kept taking to media, whether it be reporters or uh, journalistic sources like The Athletic or ESPN or just straight up social media to air their dirty laundry and their grievances, it's ugly. I know from reading in years past that the Players Union has been preparing for this December for a long time that they have a long, long, long list of grievances against management and against teams, the way, ultimately, the way money has been distributed for the last 10 years or so, the, this, this collective bargaining agreement. And they are prepared to drag this out. And it seems like, too, that the teams want to drag this out as well, that they do not want to give in to the players. Obviously, it's only November 17th. It's way too early to know for certain what's going to happen. But I would not be surprised at all if the start of the season is delayed in some capacity. Now, we are seeing some players sign. Obviously, it mentioned Verlander signing with the Astros. We've seen other players sign. Uh, Noah Syndergaard signed a one-year deal. I believe that was out with the Angels. Am I right with that, Taryn? Um We've we've seen players move. Yet, yeah, Syndergaard to the Angels. So, there was some thought that teams might kind of tip their hands on how they're expecting negotiations to go by their willingness to sign players to deals. Players are signing. There are, and thank you, Taryn, a one-year $25 million deal for Syndergaard. Man, you figure for Noah Syndergaard, a guy who has, this is going to sound unfair of me, but he's basically lived on the injured list for the past two years, gets $25 million on a prove-it deal. Sign me up for that. But there was definitely some thought that how the signing period would go here in November to start off, that if it started off really, really cool, that not a lot of action happening, that that could be kind of tipping a kind of a sign that both the players and the teams are expecting that we don't know what the 2022 season will bring, and so everybody's kind of waiting for that. So the fact that we are seeing players sign and move is encouraging that maybe there will be, even if it's not before the current agreement expires, 
maybe there will be something that relatively soon after, you know, maybe by New Year's, they have a collective bargaining agreement in place and we'll take it from there. As we get closer here in the next couple of weeks, and if indeed the current agreement expires, we'll try to dive into it a little deeper on what both sides are are going for. The the short and the sweet version, at least right now, is the players, their two biggest grievances are how teams have been very reluctant to sign free agents. I mean, the, the big name guys, of course, they're going to sign, but the, the next class down, the middle tier guys, uh, get squeezed quite a bit. There's not a lot of action on those guys. Teams are, if they're, they're either going for big name stars or they're going for guys who are under team control. And then that leads into the other problem that the players have is that you, you have players who are ready to come up from the minors that the teams are holding back so that they have more years of control and ultimately teams wind up with seven or eight years of control on a player in the major leagues that it takes just so long for players to hit true free agency as we get closer to the collective bargaining agreement actually expiring in baseball we'll dive some more into that. I really do want to get into it because it is, I find it interesting. I find it fascinating to see kind of the, the inner workings there a little bit. We'll try to have uh, one of the guys from bases loaded on bases loaded is our baseball show here on IE sports radio. They were regularly on Thursday nights, but during the playoffs, they bounced around a bit. We'll see if we can have one of those guys on and try to talk us through it. A little bit on what's going on with the collective bargaining agreement, but I would not be surprised at all to see it expire, and I would not be surprised at all to see it be a very long, drawn out, and ugly process that goes on between the players' union and the teams. And so, yes, the Cubs and the White Sox. Both clearly have needs. The White Sox pitching, starting pitching, starting pitching, starting pitching. Shore up the the middle relief of the bullpen a little bit. For the Cubs, they just got to figure out what they want to do. You know, obviously starting pitching. They had there's their starting rotation in an era where everybody lives and dies by velocity. They had none, so they were dying by velocity, so they've got to address that, plus figuring out what the next step is for this organization. But it'll be interesting to see what we get of the 2022 regular season in the MLB. Well, just because it's the offseason in baseball doesn't mean that Wrigley Field is empty and quiet. Wrigley Field is going to be in use this weekend for a football game. And they'll actually get to use the whole field this time around. We hope. I will explain that more on the other side of this break. I am Adam Karnick. This is Chi-Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Back in just a few minutes. Hey, sports fans. Do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. 
from the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What is going on, everybody? My name is Harrison Glazer, and we're coming at you from the show that never sleeps podcast. I cover the Jets, the Islanders, the Nets, and the Yankees. This is Fia Moss, and I cover the Mets, Knicks, Rangers, and the Giants. Our show is live every Wednesday through Spreaker and a bunch of other ways to get our content. Again, we're the show that never sleeps podcast. We talk about all those New York sports. It's a lot of fun. We get into all of it. Please tune in again. That's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we look forward to having you guys right here on Night Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, BS3 Sports fans? If you love listening to the BS3 Sports Show, check out the weekend wrap-up every Monday at 12.15 Central Time, 1.15 Eastern, recapping the weekend in sports like you never heard it before. Comedy, interactive chat room, it's a must-listen weekend wrap-up on Spreaker.com. Part of the X Squad. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. What's good? Fight fans, it's your boy Marcus Los Great here to give you what you want, here to give you what you need. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live, straight from your mama's basement with a crispy, crispy white tea. <laughs> They are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 
p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And of course, Marcus will be coming up right after us tonight here on IE Sports Radio. You definitely want to stick around for him. But we've got one more segment here tonight on Chi Town Weekly before we pass the baton over to Marcus and gloves off. So Northwestern is going to be hosting Penn State this weekend. Not quite the marquee matchup that we were hoping it was going to be back when the schedule came out. Northwestern's off to a rough season this year, but it still should be a fun and entertaining game. Penn State is still doing very well on the season. And it's still one of the top teams in the nation. Still somebody to be keeping an eye on a definite player in the college football landscape. I'm pulling up the rankings right now in the college football playoff rankings right now. Penn State comes in. Where did they put Penn State? Did Penn State fall all the way out of the rankings? Oh, my goodness. Well, they were fifth not that long ago. Well, you lose a couple of games, and that can happen to you quickly in the college game. But still, Penn State, definitely a good program overall. Northwestern having a bit rougher of a season this year. Just three and seven overall, just one and six in the Big Ten this year, having a rough go of it. But this weekend's game should still be kind of fun because they're playing it at Wrigley Field. And this is not the first time Northwestern has played at Wrigley Field. It was about 10 years ago they played a game at Wrigley Field as well. But they've learned from that one because this time it looks like, and I just tweeted out a picture of the field setup, the layout. It looks like the field is going to be completely usable. When they did this 10 years ago, they wound up, they realized just before the game that the one of the end zones was just far too close to the brick wall and that somebody was going to get very, very hurt. One of the goalposts even didn't even fit. They had to just put the crossbar and the uprights attached to the outfield wall with no post running down. And finally, at the last second, somebody finally said, you know what? We can't have this. Somebody's going to get hurt. Now, Wrigley's been slightly renovated since then, and the field will actually fit. It fits all the way across. For those of you that haven't seen it, basically uh, the field goes from the, the third base dugout to behind home plate is one end zone, one side, and then it runs all the way down uh, into the the left boundary, if you will, runs through center field and the the other boundary goes all the way down the first baseline, all the way down towards right field. The the outermost edge of the of the field stops about three or four feet before the wall. The back of the end zone though is probably a good 10, 15 feet from the wall. And half of the end zone has then got another 20 feet thanks to the well there in right field. So they'll be able to use the whole entire field there, which is good on them. Better layout, 
than it was when they did this a decade ago. Better, better set up overall. And of course, I can't uh, get away from a football game at Wrigley without bringing up my favorite Wrigley Field football story. Of course, the Bears played for 50 years at Wrigley Field. That was their home before they moved into Soldier Field. And one of my favorite stories, I unfortunately, I don't remember the player, but this was, of course, the leather helmet days. One of the Bears players took a handoff, put his head down, and just barreled his way through the defenders. Nobody could tackle him. Nobody can bring him down. He finally, he runs into the end zone and scores, but he kept running until eventually he smacked head first into the brick wall there at Wrigley. Gets thrown back, stands up, shakes it off, go back to the sideline. And his coach, great run, great run. That was an excellent run. You know, good job overall. And the player looks at him and says, Coach, I got to admit, that last... That last guy hit me pretty hard. <laughs> so that's always, whenever I see football being played at Wrigley, I always have to bring up that story. Real quick, score updates for you before we get out of here tonight. Uh, right now, the Blackhawks at the end of one are leading the Kraken one to nothing. Seth Jones with the goal there. And the Bulls right now, with four minutes left in the first half, are leading the Trail Blazers 50 to 39. Take a quick look at the box score there. DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine are the leading scorers. Levine with 14 points, DeRozan with 12. For the Trail Blazers right now, of uh, the players they have in their leading score. Is right now, uh, Nurchik has 10 points. Yusuf Nurchik with 10 points. He is the only trailblazer in double digits at the moment. So, Levine with 14, DeRozan with 12. The Bulls up 55 to 41 with three minutes left in the first half. That will do it for our show tonight. Want to say thank you again to our sponsors, the Southern California Warriors and Background Check International, for continuing to support us here at IE Sports Radio. Want to say thank you to Larry for all the hard work he does here at the station, keeping everybody involved and keeping us in line keeping the shows moving thank you to everybody in the chat room to Taryn and Gina and Brandon thank you guys for being here tonight and thank you for continuing to come here and listen and support not only me but this station week in and week out if you'd like to further your support of this show and of this station, we actually are now on Patreon. So you can go on Patreon and support IE Sports Radio from there. We'll be having some more information about that later. But you will get access to excellent IE Sports Radio content and merchandise as a way to say thank you for your support and it'll just continue to leave the lights on and keep things going here at the station well that is what i've got for tonight next week we will of course recap the bears and ravens game the bears coming off the bye hosting lamar jackson we'll see what that will be hopefully there'll be better weather than the last time the Ravens came to Chicago but that is a story for another time until then I am Adam Karnick for IE Sports Radio saying thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chi-Town Weekly we will see you all next week